the way we play. Now we play. That's the way we play. Now we play. That's the way we play. Now we play. Smooth and shine, seek and find. Who's that girl with the popping eyes? Bling and wing, curl I bring. Know this glow is all mine. That's the way we play. Get all things beauty all in one place. Alta Beauty. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the CEO of Ulta Beauty, Mary Dillon. This speech is my recital. I think it's very vital to rock around the right on top. All right, who knows it? It's tricky to rock around, to rock around that rock on time. It's tricky. Come on, you guys, wake up. I know you know this song. Tricky, tricky. It's tricky to rock around, to rock around that rock on time. It's tricky. All right, I'm just waking you guys up right now. Anybody know that song? Run DMC circa 1985. Okay, thank you. Why did I pick that song? I'd like to have a theme song. And some of us might think that retail is super tricky, tricky, tricky right now. We actually think that retail is full of exciting possibilities, particularly for Ulta Beauty. So good morning. I'm really thrilled to be here today. I have many of our Ulta Beauty leaders here in the audience, which is fantastic, as well as one of our board members. And what I'm going to do today is really talk about the possibilities, possibilities overall for retail, for Ulta Beauty, for our guests and our associates. We happen to believe that we are in a world that will continue to need human connection and inspiration inspiration and the ability to be accepted for who you are, and beauty will play a critical role in that. So let me start with some, a little bit of background about Ulta Beauty. We're a US-based retailer. Our company is over 27 years old, um, and our founders had three exceptional insights when they founded the company, and they're up here. One, awesome real estate location. So we ended last year with 1,074 stores, across the US, 90% of our stores are off mall, so very convenient locations. The second great insight is about our product mix. So we use a phrase called all things beauty all in one place for a reason, because we have the largest collection of beauty categories and brands and products and price points that you can get anywhere. And it really reflects the way that women shop for beauty. If you look at anybody's beauty bag, there's multiple brands in there and also services, so every Ulta store has a high caliber hair salon with highly trained designers. We do hair, skin, brows, makeup, the works in every store. So you can imagine that provides us a fantastic foundation as we think about the future of retail at Ulta Beauty. The other thing I'll just mention is that we're in an awesome, large, growing category. Ulta, or beauty as a category, is about $130 billion in sales in the US when you look at products and services. Um, and it's highly fragmented. We've got a lot of competitors. I like to say there's over 70,000 places on any given day that you can buy beauty products physically and, of course, online. But Ulta Beauty is the only one that brings this whole, the whole package together. So a little bit about our historical, a uh, recent performance, and I'm really proud about this. Uh, we've been on a tear. Our net sales kegger is 22%. So we just announced 2017 last year, or last week, I'm sorry. We have over doubled, more than doubled our sales since 2013. Our comp sales are on a tear. Okay, we were a little exuberant in 2016, but I'm pretty happy with an 11 comp in 2017 as well. Uh, and our earnings per share, the profitability to our shareholders continues to be really strong. The other piece, there's many aspects of our business that I could talk about, but one piece that I just want to mention up front is our loyalty program. So I hope some people in the room here are in the Ultimate Rewards program. It's a fantastic, I would say, world-class loyalty program. We ended last year with almost 28 million, just under 28 million members, and they drive over 90% of our sales. So if you're in our loyalty program, it's a very simple program. The more you spend, the more points you get to buy on more things at Ulta Beauty. We provide great content and work with our brand partners to provide perks and exciting beauty news and events and trial and steals. So let's talk a little bit about retail transformation. And Zia just you know, stole some of my thunder. I'm kidding. But I think you, some of the themes, are, of course, are all of us are thinking about it. To me, it's about how do you apply it to your business model and, of course, for us at Ulta Beauty. So if we step back, I do think it's kind of funny that, you know, be careful what you believe in, the what you read in the headlines, right? 2016, end of 16, was the retail apocalypse. You know, Jim Cramer, everybody was all whatever. End of 2017, retail's back. 
Well, it's all, it's all, I think it's back to stay forever, and here's why. It's about how you think about navigating the factors and forces. And I would say there's a few things I'll just touch on briefly about forces that we're looking at that are shaping our future. So the changing consumer is the critical piece, I think, to start with, right? So demographics are certainly evolving. You know, fast-growing segments of millennials, teenagers, um, those are very strong, fast-growing segments. Interestingly, also, Hispanics are the fastest-growing segment of population in the U.S., which is great because Latinas over-index in beauty. And in fact, a half of the babies that are born today in the U.S. are multicultural. So demographically, we are evolving rapidly. And also, I would say, norms and how people think about things like race, how people think about gender identity, that's going to continue to evolve and really lead to different choices. Patterns of consumption, we've talked a lot about this, but it's really all about it's got to be convenient, I want it more personalized, and I want more experiences. Technology, everybody here knows this. That's what this whole conference is about. It's a wonderful time to really think about how you can leverage all of the technology that's existing today and that exists in the future to your own business model. And then structural industry shifts, and we see this across all of retail. We certainly see it in beauty as well, direct-to-consumer brands, digital marketplaces, and the sharing economy. So these are shapes and forces that all of us see in the retail world. One thing I also just want to spend a second on, I think it's kind of interesting when you think about personalization, and it's a little bit like, you know, what's old is new again. So if you go back before the Industrial Revolution, well, basically everything was personalized, right? You had to go have your hats made and your shoes of the cobbler and perhaps your dresses. And then as we got to the Industrial Revolution, everything became much more at mass and scale, right? So that affected everything about how products are produced and where people shopped. Well, today, I'd say more than ever, people want to go back to something that is all about me. I want it personalized. I want to have an experience. And how do I leverage that? How do we leverage that insights in our business models? So it's pretty simple. I'm not saying anything you haven't heard from other speakers. It's truly about this seamless intersection of the digital and the physical journey, and just knowing that that's what this guest wants for the future. It's about increasing our focus and our investments and innovation on everything we can do that's around experiences and personalization, and frankly, decreasing the friction of commerce. Just make it easy. So another kind of angle I want to talk about a little bit, because I know you haven't seen this slide yet, because this is from Psychology 101, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Some of you might remember it. But I think it's just a good thing to think about, how humans think, and I believe this will be true forever, right? Because it's always been there. That, now, some of you may be on the lowest rung here, but depending on how late you were out last night and how much coffee you still need. But it starts with physiological needs, right? The need for air and food and water as well as moving up the chain to things that are more about belonging and self-esteem and acceptance, all the way up to self-actualization. So think about that framework as it relates to retail brands, and it's, it's kind of interesting. So um, Starbucks is a brand that I know and love, and many of us do. When you think about Starbucks as a perfect example, you go there for something physiological, right? Some coffee or some breakfast items, but you're certainly seeing all sorts of people spending a lot of time in a situation where it's about connecting with others in humanity. I think Whole Foods set the tone on this, and many grocers are now doing this as well, taking the shopping, the grocery shopping experience, and creating community, creating an environment that people actually want to be. So not on their screens and not looking down, but hanging out with each other in a shopping environment. Well, you probably know where I'm going with this. I think for Ulta Beauty, we're set up perfectly to think about this whole place that people think and live and breathe. because. Our guests come into our stores, and they certainly can touch and feel and smell physical products that they want and love. They also can have an emotional experience around interacting with our associates. And you know, when you, if somebody invents a, a drone to get, cut your hair or do your brows, I don't want to know about it. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. It's about humans performing services on other humans. And that also leads up often, and I get many letters from uh, guests about transformational experiences that sometimes happen in our stores that frankly go up to joy and confidence and transformation. So bottom line, I think beauty is a great place to be. 
You know, we're in an industry that I believe is always going to be important in people's lives. And it's getting even more dynamic with the things I just talked about. We're in a multicultural country, fluidity of gender definition, the importance of social media, the explosion of beauty bloggers, you know, the fact that more photos are being taken today than ever in history, and I have a feeling that's only going to increase. So how are we maximizing th these insights and dynamics at Ulta Beauty? I'll just give you a few examples. So back to the business model, right? Not gonna th this is working for us, our real estate locations, our product mix, our services, but how do we elevate it so that we make that experience even more relevant five and 10 and 20 years from now? Well, our stores already are quite experiential in nature. So whether you're coming in for service or for advice, or just to spend a little time shopping, we are investing around how do we increase that amount of experience and personalized experience in the store and decrease the amount of time that our associates have to spend on tasks that aren't as value added. Because if our associates love one thing, it's beauty. And how do they spend more time on that? Also, our digital experience. You know, I'm thrilled. We've got a fantastic e-commerce platform, the biggest collection of beauty products you can buy anywhere across every category, right? Hair, makeup, fragrance, skin, tools. Um, last year, we grew 60%. Our e-commerce business grew 60%. So we're thrilled about it. And when our folks shop online, they become even bigger Ulta Beauty shoppers because it's largely incremental. She's going there to discover and learn and find even new, newer things in beauty. But we've got, for example, our mobile app. You know, clearly, mobile is the center of how everybody is shopping. And our mobile app has something pretty cool on it called Glam Lab, which I encourage you to try. It gives you an opportunity to virtually try on makeup just by uploading a selfie. And you can try on thousands of shades of product that look very realistic on your skin tone. And then you can verbally order those products or learn more information about them as well. So how do we think about taking the customer on that whole journey through shopping, educating, entertaining, and inspiring, and obviously driving more loyalty to Ulta Beauty. So a couple things I just want to mention. For us, the next level is going to be about partnerships, right? I mean, we don't have to figure out everything ourselves. Google's a great example, a fantastic long-term partner for Ulta Beauty, and really helping us to create that seamless experience for our guests, bridging the digital and the physical experience. So mobile shopping is, you know, is, is where the growth is happening and conversion is growing rapidly. With Google Express, we now have, we do many things with Google, of course, right? From advertising to experimenting with Google Cloud. But our relationship with Google Express, which goes back some time, allows us, when there is a makeup emergency, doesn't happen all that often, but it can, uh, to get that to our guests even faster than we have before. So 95% of our, of our markets, you can get two-day shipping with our Google Express partnership, and in many markets, overnight or same day. And our guest is able to also earn her loyalty points on that as well. So it's driving basket, it's driving loyalty, and it's driving an even better guest experience. And another great example is with Facebook. So you can imagine the beauty enthusiast is highly engaged on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, and so we're partnering with Facebook on an early bet to be one of the first retailers to do this with them, which is helping to connect that journey between their properties and our stores. And we're testing off, we're kicking off a test very soon where we're going to be able to do much more to measure the effectiveness of social advertising and conversion to in-store and online shopping. And then the last uh, partnership I'll mention is with a really cool little Denver startup company. I know they're here as well, Spruce, Spruce Labs. So Spruce uh, happens to also have a men's clothing store in Denver where you could get an awesome uh, shave and haircut. Uh, but they have an underpinning of technology, and I'd say in a vision that's very convergent with what we think is right, which is, again, that seamless experience for our guests. So we're testing and launching something very soon uh, that's going to be pretty cool. So on the service side of our business, making it much easier for our guests to make an appointment, to check in for an appointment, to get consultation with a stylist and feedback, as well as allow our salon professionals to have an easier way to manage, to manage their schedule and their capacity. And overall, you can imagine that a technology like this will help us do even more with creating those experiences in store where our guests can discover, engage, and, and transact. 
And I would say, like everybody here, hashtag new normal. You can imagine my kids love when I overuse the hashtag, so I'll just point that out. <laughs> But it is, you know, it's for everybody, right? So for us, and we announced this on our call last week. You know, it's about we are going to continue to invest in our business for the many years ahead of growth that we see that is going to be required, where it's going to be required that you are innovating that guest experience and fund that by just being smarter and more efficient with how we run the business every day. So it's an exciting time. We're never done with innovation, and、uh, there's a lot more to come. So I want to spend the last few minutes that I have on sort of a different, but I think actually really important topic, which is really about what Alta Beauty is about from a leadership and a culture perspective. Why? Because I think that's what is really differentiating us and helping us to drive the kind of growth that you've seen. So we really center everything we do. On our guests and our associates at the center of everything we do, and I believe that a strong business that's led through the lens of culture and diversity is the kind of business that's going to get engagement and results. So one of the things I'm super proud about is one of the wonderful things about running a growing retail company is the amount of jobs that we're creating. So we have over 37,000 associates. It's also pretty cool that 92% of our associates are women. We've created 17,000 new jobs in the last five years, and we have promoted 6,000 women to management roles. And what I love about retail is that it truly is. Thank you. Thank you.、Um, and the cool thing about retail, it's such an important industry because it offers the ability for millions of folks to get jobs. Who maybe only have a high school degree in some instances. I can't tell you the number of times that I've met somebody who started as a part-time cashier in our stores, who's now a general manager or a district manager. So I think that's part of my ongoing, you know, privilege and responsibility is about creating careers that are rewarding、um, for our all of our associates. The other thing I'd say is that I'm really proud about the fact that we are creating a diversity-forward brand. And workplace, and to me, it's all about how do we celebrate the folks who are in our stores, who bring beauty to life every day in all of its limitless、uh, combinations. These are photos right now, just from some of our our team at our Manhattan store that we just opened recently on the Upper East Side. So. So to me, this is kind of where it starts: is having people in our stores who represent the people who shop in our stores and can bring beauty and ultra beauty into their lives in the most engaging and, and inspiring ways. But you know, it also starts with my leadership team. So we've got a lot of stores out there and a lot of associates. But our corporate center, it's really critical that we also are sure that we're creating great opportunities and, and as well. My leadership team. This is about 55 people. Great headshots. We do those pretty well,、um, but I'll just say a couple of stats, which is that 50% of our board of directors is women, which puts us in a very rare place. 50% of my executive team is women, and 60% of our officers are women. And, and these guys didn't know I was going to do this, but a couple of the folks here with us today, women are leading our technology business as well. So our chief information officer, Diane Randolph. Thank you.、Uh, our SVP of Digital E-Commerce, Prama Bot, and our VP of Guest Facing Systems, Michelle Pazinski. Just more more examples of I think we're really doing something different, and I'm excited about it.、Um, but it's also about how do we lead. So it's it's really to me there's three lenses that I hold my team accountable for at the at all levels of the company, which is to lead through three lenses. Functional expertise, enterprise thinking, and collaboration. So I honestly believe that the best environment for a company and a business to do its very best is for people who can be great at what they do, the function they grew up in, but truly understand how to step out of that sometimes and think about what is good for the total enterprise, and do that in a way that's through the lens of. And I don't mean like make all nice, nice with collaboration. I don't mean like let's all agree on everything. I mean truly go out and seek. If you're running a supply chain project, what do the stores think? What do we think from a consumer perspective? What does HR think? Right? Truly collaborate with your business partners. And I, I have to tell you, I've got a team that is A plus on all these levels, and they're bringing solutions better and smarter and faster to our guests because they operate this way. And easier said than done. 
Last thing I'll say here is that you know I'm really proud about the fact that we're not just talking about culture but measuring it. So since I've been the CEO, we started a, a quantitative engagement survey annually, and right now I'm thrilled about the fact that we have our engagement, which is sort of the top metric out of that, is at 80 percent. Okay, and that's across 37,000 people. That is way, it's in the top 10 percent of all retailers, and the top 25 percent of all companies that are looked at globally through Blessing White. So it's not just words on the wall. This is happening because we truly engage everybody in the company, especially those working in our stores, as business leaders and as partners, and helping us get smarter and better every day. So I just want to wrap it up and say thank you so much for your time today. As you can tell, I'm really excited about the possibilities for Ulta Beauty, and I'm excited about our ability to continue to grow by bridging that digital and physical divide in smart ways, our ability to create opportunities, and to provide an experience that provides fun and builds confidence and shows truly how limitless beauty can be. Thank you very much.